You haven't had anything to drink tonight? Not tonight, no. Not tonight? Okay. Well, one of the things that we do is we ask people to both do this thing, okay? Caitlin Ebner crossed the line and got pulled over on her way home from work. Well, real hard. I'm going to ask you to stop. Keep going, keep going, keep going. You can stop. No, she wasn't drinking. All tests for alcohol came up empty. When's the last time you smoked marijuana? Oh, I don't do that. You, I can give you a drug test right now. I've, you you, you I don't smoke marijuana? I do not, okay. no. All right. Well, you're showing me indicators that you have been smoking marijuana, okay? I didn't realize that you could get arrested for something that you didn't do until it happened to me. Right, watch your wrist for me. I don't want to pinch you. Can you for marijuana? No, ma'am, not possession unless I find it in your car. I believe that you're impaired by the marijuana that you've smoked. Before you felt those handcuffs closing over your wrist, did you understand just how serious this was? I didn't understand. I, um, as soon as I took that breathalyzer, I thought I was going home. It's time you're being taken into custody, okay, for DUI drugs. The waitress spent the night in jail and had her alcohol server's permit revoked because of the DUI arrest. After four months, prosecutors dismissed all charges because her blood test came back completely clean. You had to spend months and thousands of dollars proving your innocence. I did. When's the last time you smoked weed? I don't smoke weed. You don't smoke weed? No, not at all. The same thing happened to this college student two weeks earlier on Good Friday. Well, I believe you have, okay? I need to borrow your arm real quick, okay? I believe that's why. I believe that's why you were failing to maintain your lane and driving halfway wait, wait, on, on the ramp when I was behind no, you. Hold on one second. Hold on, sir. Give me just one second. On one Give second. me just one You're second. You're arresting me. That's correct. I didn't understand. I'm like, why are you arresting me? Like, what did I do? He said DUI of a substance. I'm like, what? Are you arrested me because you think I smoke marijuana? I believe that, that you're impaired by cannabis. Yes, ma'am. Sir, sir, I don't smoke weed. Is there a way you can test me right now? Princess Umbamara was also jailed and fought the DUI drug charges for half of 2016. So the blood test comes back. They toss the case. I remember my lawyer trying to talk about a deal. I was like, what? I'm not taking a deal. I didn't do anything. I want like my life back. Can you reverse time? Can you stick your tongue out real big? Months later, it happened a third time to this Auburn student. You're giving me indicators that you have consumed marijuana, so you're being placed under arrest for DUI, okay? The prosecutor filed this dismissal of the student's DUI drug charge five months later. Defendant performed well on field sobriety evaluations, and blood and urine were negative. Three DUI drug arrests, three tox screens negative for marijuana, one police officer. Cobb County's T.T. Carroll. Documents show Carroll is one of the highest rated and best trained officers on Cobb County's legendary DUI task force. Well, you're showing me numerous indicators. He's a certified drug recognition expert. Well, I don't believe you're telling me the truth, okay? I don't believe because I'm seeing some involuntary indicators that you've consumed marijuana. One of 250 Georgia officers who've gone through this intensive month-long training. A drug recognition evaluation involves a dozen observations that allow officers not only to pronounce a driver is on drugs, but to identify which of seven types of drugs are in their system. Marijuana. How do you look at somebody and say marijuana? There are involuntary responses of the body that we can observe that would suggest impairment of marijuana. He did these techniques that he was taught, and he determined you were on something you weren't on. Yeah, unfortunate for me. Because he's ingesting marijuana. That's what my training suggests. Officer Carroll relies on his drug recognition expert training, but in these three dismissed cases, he didn't do the full DRE evaluation after the arrest. The standard protocol requires all 12 steps to be complete, yet any police officer can make a DUI drug arrest on fewer observations. If I establish probable cause, you know, and I believe that based on my training, that's why I put the handcuffs on you. Several several, several indicators. Okay, so when I do a drug test, I'll be free to go, correct? You're going to jail, ma'am, okay? I don't have a magical drug test that I can give you right now. But he just did the magic drug test that resulted in your arrest. They're ruining innocent people's lives. Caitlin Ebner filed an internal affairs complaint against Officer Carroll. Cobb County investigators exonerated the officer and doubted Caitlin's innocence, insisting the marijuana could have already metabolized out of the blood. They said, yeah, we see this happen all the time. The test results come back wrong. So the test results were wrong? Yeah, that's what they said, that the test results were wrong. And also, if I had a urine test, that it would have came back positive for drugs. But Caitlin got her own urine test the same week as her arrest the urine test was also negative for marijuana or other drugs. This training is so powerful 
that they believe they can detect drugs that a blood test will not detect. It's extremely surprising. That's my life that they're playing with. Cobb County Police Department. Last week, Cobb County's DUI task force was awarded a trophy by Mothers Against Drunk Driving. 1,696 DUI arrests. And Officer Carroll was given a silver medal for 90 DUI arrests in 2016. He put dozens of actual convicted drunk drivers behind bars last year. But if he got three people who were innocent behind bars having to defend themselves, how does that balance out for you? It's something I have to carry for the rest of my life. They are suing the Cobb County Police Department in this federal suit. They are the same drivers we showed had negative blood tests for marijuana, despite spending months defending themselves against DUI charges. I want to ask you a question, okay? Okay. When's the last time you smoked marijuana? Oh, I don't do that. You, I can give you a drug test right now. I have, you you, you I don't, don't smoke marijuana? I do not. Okay. You're giving me indicators that you have consumed marijuana, okay? Because I'm seeing some involuntary indicators that you've consumed marijuana. Three DUI drug arrests. Three arrests to be consumed. I think I smoke marijuana. I believe that you're impaired by cannabis, yes ma'am. All three blood tests negative for marijuana. The charges were eventually dropped, but the lab results took months, and still the Cobb County Police Department insists its officers can detect marijuana in drivers that a crime lab cannot. Can these blood tests be trusted to convict a driver if they can't be trusted to exonerate a driver? That's a fair question. and. That certainly is a, a topic that needs to be debated with uh, expert personnel, medical personnel. Cobb County's new police chief, Michael Register, is not named in the ACLU lawsuit, but he is overseeing changes to his department's policies as a direct result of our investigation. All three drivers suing the police were jailed overnight. Now Cobb County is releasing drivers suspected of marijuana impairment and delaying formal charges until the blood tests come back. We certainly want to protect protect the citizens on the roadways of Cobb County by getting a suspected impaired driver off the roadway. But we also don't want to make an unnecessary arrest on a citizen. The 11 Alive investigators uncovered the clean drug test by reviewing dozens of DUI arrests by the same drug recognition expert officer. We manually checked 85 cases through court records and found multiple dismissals. Three were nearly identical. The three drivers who are now suing the police department for wrongful arrest. They're kind of treating him like the human drug sniffing dog. He's the drug whisperer. He can see impairment in people that other officers can't see. I think that they think that because he has so many arrests. One day I'm gonna go and get a real job and people are gonna be able to Google my name and see that I was arrested for drugs that I didn't do. And that's Caitlin mm -hmm. Ebner, one of the three plaintiffs in this case. We did talk with the police chief before this lawsuit was filed, but it's really not just Cobb County. Tonight on the late feed, we're gonna actually show you dash cam from a professor down in South Georgia who nearly lost custody of his two young children because of an over-the-counter Tylenol PM he had taken the day before he was stopped. Wow. That is at 11. And tonight. there's so many medicines these days that people are taking, you know, for an assortment of ailments that you can't really tell what, you know, what it will be on their bodies. I mean, and the way we, this we works, have become a culture of that. Exactly. And the way this works is if they find anything in your blood and they saw you touch the yellow line, mm. one is proof for the other and you are DUI. Wow. And months later, it still is getting sorted months out. Months later, it takes the GBI crime lab that, that long. And in the meantime, you're guilty till proven innocent. That's amazing. You don't smoke marijuana? I do not. Okay. No. You don't consume any marijuana or nothing like that? I don't. Well, I believe you have, okay? I need to borrow your arm real quick, okay? The drug recognition expert did not believe these drivers. Are you arrested because you think I smoke marijuana? I believe that you're impaired by cannabis, yes ma'am. All three gave their blood to prove their innocence. Can I take a drug test, anything please? The charges were dropped months later when all three blood tests came back negative. As far as the individuals unjustly arrested. I think at the time of the arrest, the officer felt that they were making a just arrest. Will you submit to the state administered chemical test of your blood and urine under the implied consent law? Yes, sir. That test also came back negative 
10 years ago. Cobb County police have known about this problem for at least a decade. Lab tests for marijuana are notoriously unreliable for proving or disproving impairment. Studies show there's no amount that affects every user the same way. Internal affairs investigations show Cobb County consistently questions negative lab results, not its drug recognition experts. The officer's opinion based on his training is more accurate at detecting impairment of marijuana in a driver than the blood test. Is that your understanding? We have to base our ability to prosecute on the threshold of the law. And when the evidence or the circumstances does not meet that threshold, then the person should not be prosecuted. Publicly, the department announced a policy change after our investigation, no longer jailing suspected cannabis-impaired drivers. But privately, Cobb County was in damage control. In an internal email, an official wrote, the department has taken quite a negative PR hit because of this story. Our Facebook page has been blowing up with tons of negative comments. It's time to be taken into custody, okay, for DUI drugs. Right after our story and a full year after Caitlin Ebner's arrest, Cobb County had the crime lab check her blood a second time. The GBI was asked to use a more sensitive test for the components of THC. Again, the crime lab reported negative across the board. Did they ever apologize? Nope, they never apologized. Officer Abbott did say, I know you don't trust me, but I'll always be there for you. And my response was to put me back in jail again for something I didn't do. Lieutenant Greg Abbott, head of the DUI task force, was praised by county officials for this five-page internal memo attacking our investigation, falsely claiming we allowed Caitlin Ebner to lie on camera. Those three cases fit Keefe's narrative that Officer Carroll was making bad arrests. He wrote that there were no other negative blood tests for arrest by this officer officer where the drivers denied consuming marijuana. 85 arrest reports. This is what the Cobb County Police Department gave us when we asked for every DUI arrest Officer Carroll made in 2016. But Officer Carroll made 90 DUI arrests last year, not 85. Yet the Cobb County Police Department had no problem reporting every arrest to Mothers Against Drunk Driving, for which Officer Carroll received a silver medal last year. So why, when we asked for every arrest, were five reports missing? I'm going to ask you a question. I need you to be perfectly honest with me, okay? When's the last time you smoked weed? I don't smoke weed. You don't smoke weed? This is one of the cases Cobb County didn't tell us about, shown here for the first time. You're giving me signs of ingestion of marijuana, okay? Young mother, Brittany Penwell, a fourth arrest by Officer Carroll. Most people tell me that they don't, but ma'am, I believe based on my observation that you have consumed marijuana, okay, that the point's made you an impaired and less safe driver, all right? Her blood test also came back negative, her case dismissed and automatically expunged. Back in March, a police captain certified in writing, there were no other reports excluded due to expungements. The department gave the 11 Alive investigators this drug recognition log for Officer Carroll, with much of the toxicology blacked out. But we obtained this unredacted copy, shared internally among commanders. Hiding behind those redactions, Penwell's negative drug test, and yet another negative tox report for a fifth marijuana arrest, dismissed for no traces of marijuana in the blood. Two more negative tests, hiding behind Cobb County's black marker. Yet the DUI task force commander told his superiors, we picked the only three cases. Lieutenant Abbott wrote to his new chief before our interview, why are we still speaking to this dishonest guy? Lieutenant Abbott commands a unit that has the power on a single officer's opinion to lock someone up. If he is willing to alter the facts to fit his case in a written document, an official document, how can we trust him to not alter the facts in a case that might result in someone losing their freedom. I've always known him to be an honorable person and a good officer. I've just seen way too many videos of problems. But you're not black. Remember, we only kill black people. Yeah, we only kill black people, right? All the videos you've seen, have you seen black people get killed? This is the DUI task force commander in a video that surfaced shortly after our interview with the chief. Lieutenant Abbott retired in lieu of termination. Remember, we only kill black people. Yeah, we only kill black people, right? Sir, would you mind stepping back here for me, please? I'm going to pull him out and check his sobriety. Okay. Are you on any medication or taking any medication for anything? None at all? No. Yeah, he 
anything to drink tonight? Nothing wrong. Okay. A college professor arrested for DUI. Now this time, do me a favor, put your hands behind your back. In front of his son and daughter. How old your children? 12 and 10. I'm Lieutenant Chapman, from Garden City PD. Is this, this your dad? I'm placing you on arrest for suspicion of DUI. Let's save drugs, okay? Well, he, he's being placed under arrest right now, and I'll explain everything to your mom. You know, the fact that my kids had to watch all this thing was just very, very distressing. I didn't have a chance to explain to them, you know, what was happening. They only saw me being put in handcuffs. Your father's going to be treated very well, okay? He's going to be, he's going to be okay, okay? There's, there's just a problem with his driving. The police tried to play it down like, oh, we're going to treat your dad nicely, and he's going to sleep in his own bed tonight. But my kids, you know, the, forever, but they're going to have to live with the, the memory of seeing their dad put in handcuffs, you know, right in front of them. The professor is still so traumatized he doesn't want us to use his name. Garden City Police charged the father with DUI drugs and two counts of child endangerment because his kids were in the back seat. Hi. Two convictions for child endangerment right. would have been you don't see your kids, they go to either your ex-wife or foster care. Right. In the back of my mind is really the whole time I know this, that I'm innocent and I didn't endanger my children in any way. Your husband has been placed under arrest for uh, suspicion of DUI drugs. What? And, yes, ma'am. Even my, uh, my ex said, I know that he wasn't doing anything to endanger the kids and I know that he doesn't do drugs or anything like that. You're the wife, ex-wife. Ex-wife, yeah. He's going to be under arrest for DUI, okay? He, but he doesn't drink. For medication. The blood test came back positive for one drug, Tylenol PM, specifically diphenhydramine, the active ingredient in the allergy medicine Benadryl. Either of these over-the-counter pills can impair a driver worse than alcohol, but only four to six hours after taking one. I had taken a Tylenol PM 19 hours before the arrest was made. Indeed, the GBI crime lab detected the Benadryl in such a small amount, it was consistent with a single dose taken a full day before the stop. They, they wanted me to go to a lesser plea and go to DUI school. Because um, of a Benadryl you took because almost of a Benadryl. 24 hours earlier. Yeah, this was the next day, the next night, not even the next day, the next night. Is this driver innocent of DUI? Well, he is now. I mean, the, the court dismissed the charges against him. Garden City Police Chief David Lyons, who once led Georgia's Association of Chiefs of Police, says the officer's opinion is the only tool approved for detecting drugs pre-arrest. If it's alcohol, you can do an intoxilizer and no On immediate. the spot. On the spot. For DUI drugs, no such thing. Some tool that I have beyond an educated guess that you're impaired or not. It's like a guessing game. Well, maybe the drug test will turn out something. The officer did not have a crystal ball. He had no way of knowing what the drug test would reveal weeks or months into the future. The GBI crime lab takes an average of seven weeks if testing for drugs alone and nearly three months if testing for alcohol as well. In the meantime, the future for the accused is unclear and their world is turned upside down. You know, I know that when you go to a doctor, you can get results from lab tests two or three days at the most. But, you know, here, because it has to go to the GBI and all this stuff, it's going to take uh, three months to get your, your lab tests back. You may not get a definitive answer for weeks or months. Exactly. Sir, would you mind stepping back here for me, please? So the only drug detector available in the field is the officer himself. What I have you do is put your back towards my patrol car and just face me. You could have gone to jail and lost your kids over the opinion of a police officer. That's right. State records show the arresting officer completed advanced roadside impairment training, including drug detection, just 15 days before stopping the professor. If you give someone a hammer, everything starts looking like a nail. Absolutely. Is there a human element once you get advanced training that causes you to see things uh, that are either there or not there? I, I don't have an answer for that. I, I would. That, that argument could probably be made that uh, I have this new training and I'm going to go out and show the world that, that I know how to do all this stuff and I'm going to take advantage of my new, my new latest toy, maybe. It's not a toy. Not, well, let's go, let's go pull them out and check a sobriety. Let's go see what we can find. It's like somebody's life you're dealing with. 
Garden City police stand by their arrest. They even pointed to a nearly undetectable amount of Ambien in the blood test, so small it couldn't be measured by the GBI lab. I don't have to be perfect. I have to be reasonable and I have to have probable cause. When they lose in court, nothing happens to them. They have nothing to lose and the, and the citizen has everything to lose. Their name, their reputation, their lifestyle. In the end, the professor didn't lose the case, his job or his kids, but he lost something else, his trust in the system. I'm placing you on arrest for suspicion of DUI, let's save drugs, okay? These people are supposed to be protecting, saving lives and they're, they're messing up lives, they're, they're, they're ruining lives. I'm not in the business of ruining somebody's life. We are put in a position of getting impaired drivers off the road. At the end of the day, we did our job. If they arrest 10 people and eight of them are positive, who cares about the two innocent people? That's right, that's right. Except the two innocent people. I'm being taken into custody, okay, for DUI drugs. My name is Caitlin, and it happened to me. It happened to me. Well, I believe you have, okay? I need to borrow your arm real quick, okay? It happened to me. Innocent people arrested for driving on drugs. It happened to me. Our investigation shows this is not limited to one arrest or one officer. I'm placing you on arrest for suspicion of DUI. Uh, let's save drugs, okay? It's a nationwide phenomenon. It happened to me. It happened to me. So you're saying that you don't smoke marijuana? It happened to me. It happened to me. To me. To me. To me. To me. To me. What is so troubling about these arrests to you? We have police officers arresting innocent people and throwing them into jail based on a training that is completely unreliable and is based on junk science. Sean Young and the ACLU of Georgia are suing the Cobb County Police Department on behalf of the four drivers we discovered in our investigation. Hey, my name is Officer Carroll, Cobb County Police. Are we talking about bad police officers or are we talking about bad training? We're talking about police departments, teaching them how to be these so-called drug recognition experts and telling them that they need to start pulling people over and throwing them into jail based on the results of this completely bogus methodology. That methodology has been validated by multiple studies, but most were funded by the same federal agency pushing the drug recognition expert program. Some independent studies have concluded a DRE's opinion of drug impairment is not much better than flipping a coin. In order to graduate, drug recognition experts are tested using 12 real-world intoxicated subjects in jails or rehab facilities. They are not required to evaluate a sober person as part of that test group. I'm seeing indicators that you've consumed marijuana. They hit the streets, having seen drugs in every suspect they've evaluated. Can you stick your tongue out real big at me? What's troubling to me is that these police officers are being told that they can now conduct medical examinations on random people by the side of the road. I wouldn't trust my own brother to do a medical examination on me because he's not a doctor. There are documented visible indicators in drivers who test positive for marijuana. Red eyes, pupils not dilating or recovering normally, raised taste buds, and a coating on the tongue. But all of those symptoms can be caused by something else totally benign. Stick your tongue out real big. The officers believe they're seeing impairment because they're taught to see it. Now, when I tell you to begin. They learn from other officers and former officers who have been certified as DRE instructors. Rebound. Some of the most pronounced I've seen in a while. Mm -hmm. Here is the video of the infractions resulting in the traffic stops that landed all four drivers in jail. A touch of a lane marker. One straddled the line while deciding between two exits. You're halfway in the middle of the ramp when you're driving, okay? Because I was trying to see if I should go through okay. straight through 85 right. or straight to 75 okay. right here. You can check my car. You can do whatever you need to do. Okay. No drugs or drug paraphernalia were found. The officer's opinion alone was enough to justify a DUI drug arrest, even though in three of our four cases, the drug recognition expert did not do the full DRE evaluation. All of the certification studies were done on doing this full protocol, this full evaluation, mm -hmm. but the officers don't need that under the law to make an arrest. They need probable cause, which is a much lower standard than 12 steps. And probable cause requires that police officers use some kind of meaningfully reliable method 
of detecting whether someone uh, has committed a crime. It turns out drug recognition officers get it right in the vast majority of full 12-step DRE evaluations. In the last three years, Georgia DREs completed toxicology tests on 507 drivers suspected of marijuana impairment. 430 came back positive for THC. That means 77 drivers tested negative. The highest trained DUI officers in the state got it right 85% of the time. You can throw statistics at our clients all day. What they know is that they were thrown in jail overnight. Some of them have never been arrested ever in their lives. And they now have to answer for an arrest record for a crime they didn't commit for the rest of their lives. Officers have learned the DRE training allows them to see all they need to justify an arrest without completing the full post-arrest evaluation to confirm it. No one is tracking those cases for accuracy. The arrests of Caitlin Ebner, Kunle Oriomi, and Princess Umbamara and their negative talk screens aren't in any federal database because DREs are required to report only full evaluation opinions. It happened to me. It happened to me. It's me. To me. It's me. It's me. To me. To me. This slide is part of the DRE class in Georgia. No drugs detected. Instructors tell their officers when this happens to you and it will, it's important that you don't let yourself become discouraged. The laboratory is not perfect and the toxicologists won't always be able to corroborate your opinion, even though your opinion may be accurate. When someone tells you you're an expert and puts you through this training, do you blame the officers for thinking they have these powers? Yeah, they're going to be led to think that they they are now uh, an expert in whatever training they went through. But this piece of paper, this printed certificate, it means absolutely nothing. And courts in some states, such as Florida and California, do not allow prosecutors to use the word expert when referring to certified DREs. They're called drug recognition evaluators or examiners. Dozens of the new DREs just hit the streets in Georgia, funded by a special grant from the governor's office for highway safety. You know, I'm a former prosecutor, right? And that's the way I kind of see the world sometimes. But I'm uncomfortable with that 85% number, that the best of the best in doing this only get it right 85% of the time. When it comes to marijuana in Georgia, that's correct. I mean, they're getting better every year. Last year, they were 87%. But what if you're in that 13%? The community is still saying maybe the drug test was wrong. The cases were dismissed, but they still think in many cases those people were actually impaired because the DRE said they were. All right. And is there any money in, in this whole thing? Is well, there a we money trail? Yeah, we wanted to follow the money. What I can tell you is that a lot of times these drug recognition expert officers and DUI task force officers, their raises are tied to the number of arrests they make, not convictions, arrests. And that can result in a merit raise. And there used to be a grant that for all of this where basically the number of arrests a department made, arrests in general, they could get federal grants. That has finally been changed to where now it's a more quality-based system than a quantity-based one. We're going to stay on. All right, absolutely. Great, great reporting. Thanks so much.